my name is Will Habeck, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add custom unique usernames into your Flutterflow application. There's a bunch of different use cases for this. For my example project here, I actually have the username attached to a parameter for a web page. So everyone can go to the main domain and actually go to their unique username. This can actually be used in a ton of different use cases. Maybe you want unique usernames just throughout the platform alone. Uh, but this is basically a simple and easy way to add them during the signup process. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the Flutterflow editor to show you actually how to implement it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened the Flutterflow editor in my preferred project. In this case, it's actually a project that I'm going to be launching soon. So be on the lookout for that. It's a link tree template that works straight out of the box with a unique username. In this case, we have the login screen and I'll also have a sign up screen. So for the sign up specifically, I wanted to add a unique username for every user and that's automatically created when they sign up. I take their full name and basically use that to create the username. But obviously you could use any string you'd prefer, any set of numbers, whatever it may be. Uh, maybe it's a company name or other things, all you know things you can do uh, in this case with the same function and method. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you are using, if you're trying to scale your platform, you're gonna wanna use Firebase and you're actually gonna go to your collections. You can ignore all this. And I created just a admin uh, collection and that's where I actually list all the usernames here. So it's up to you, whatever you wanna name it. I just named it admin and you can see I added a field here and it's taken underscore usernames, pretty clear, and a list of strings here. So if I were to go into my um, you know, Firebase, I'd be able to see that collection. And ideally what's gonna happen is as I fill this document, it's going to fill the list here with strings that are taken. Like I said, this is an easy solution. So maybe this isn't a scalable solution if you have you know tens of thousands of members, but it's definitely an easy way to get you started before you actually work on creating maybe a, a larger custom function in the future. So after you've created this collection, maybe a base collection, you'll go ahead and create the field, uh, just name it whatever you want. And then the data type needs to be a list and it's a string. Okay, so once that's created, we're actually gonna go ahead and go to the custom functions. The custom function I'm gonna highlight today is the username standardizer. And you'll be able to find all that information in the description below. So if I go and create a custom function, you could just click create in the top right. I've named it username standardizer. The return type is a string. It's not a list and it's not nullable. And in this case, I just named the argument full name because I'm using the person's full name to create that username. The data type is a string. It's not a list and it is not nullable. From there, just go ahead and click on code. This code will be found in the description. So ideally what you want to do, if you name it something else, that name is going to appear here. You can see that if you name the actual argument differently, instead of full name, that's going to appear here. So anytime you see like full name, you'll basically just need to replace this with whatever you decide to define as the argument there. But essentially what happens is it just takes the name, this dot replace all replaces a set of characters. So in this case, I have it replacing, you know, spaces, hyphens, most special characters, and then as well as spaces, and then I have it return lowercase. So I can show you a test here, you'll just paste this in here. Again, make sure full name or whatever matches whatever you named your argument, and then go ahead and test it. So hello world, if I were to run that, you'll see it's going to return hello world, no spaces, all lowercase. Or if I did, you know, a bunch of random characters here and then type some more and I click run, you'll see it's going to eliminate a lot of those, those messy characters to create a 
a string here that I could actually navigate to if it were a link in this case, or I could use it as a username. So it's clearly working, right? So I'll click save and we can actually navigate to our project. So here I have a form. I have a basic login form. I have the full name, their email and a password. So then the sign up button is the special part. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to actions. And the first thing you want to do is validate the form. If you're going to create a login form, or if you're just creating this somewhere else, don't worry about validate form. The real magic comes in two things. First, whenever you create this, this document or this username, in this case, I'm actually creating the account at the same time. So that's why I have create account. You'll go to wherever you set the field. So here you can see I'm setting the username field and I'm using the new if then else conditions provided by Flutterflow. Uh, so you'll, you know, name whatever the name of the username field is in your database, you'll select that, choose from variable, and then do an if then else statement. And that's a conditional value. So the if statement you can see is if list contains item. So now it's like, wait a minute, where is this list coming from? Well, for wherever you decide to actually take the action here. So in this case, like the button is where the action is taking place. You need to query the admin or whatever you name that collection field that had the list of strings. So here I'm querying the collection, the admin collection, there's only going to be a single document and that single document contains all the list of the strings. And I've, you know, I've turned off hide widget if no match. So the button doesn't go away. And this is a single time query. So once you're done with that, you will go to the actions. You will go to wherever the username field is again and open that if then else statement. So the if statement is if taking usernames, this is pulled from the query. So this is the list of strings that you created in that collection, taking username, if list contains, and then what you're going to do is select the custom function you created and plug in the string. So in this case, what happens is it takes the full name text field. You can see that here, full name field, it plugs it into the function that function returns that standardized string. So all lowercase, no spaces, eliminates all the special characters and returns that. Then it detects if that string is already within that list of usernames. If it is, then it's going to, that would mean there's a duplicate username. That would mean that it's already in the list of usernames. It's already been created. So if there were two Tom Smiths, for example, you can't have two of the same Tom Smith username. So what I have done, you're welcome to change this however you like. What I have done is again, combine texts and I add the function. So it returns that, that lowercase standardized string, and then adds a random integer at the end of it from zero to 100. In this case, I don't expect my project to scale over a hundred users of the same username, but if you needed to, you could do a thousand, you could do, you know, a random string, whatever you want. Just, I wouldn't do a double because we don't want a decimal point or some other information. So I've just done zero to a hundred. So that way, if there is a duplicate, it'll just, you know, instead of two Tom Smiths, it'll be Tom Smith 10 or Tom Smith 16, right? just an easy way to create a new username without having to go through the extra work. Okay. The else statement is just going to be returning that, that function we made with the standardized string. So if it's not a duplicate string or a duplicate username in the list, then we just plug that string into the function. It's going to return, you know, Tom Smith, all lowercase, no spaces, and that will be the username. That's all you have to do. It's really easy. And then in my use case, for example, I'll show you what I've done. So I actually pass the parameter, the, a string as the username. And so you can see, I just did colon username. So that's how I'm actually able to create that page, 
you know, where it's whatever your link is backslash and then the username. And then at the page side, I actually do a query to search for that username within the user field. So I search all the user documents and I return the document where the username equals whatever the string parameter is here. So if it were, you know, flutterflow.com slash Tom Smith, it's going to return the user document where that user's username is equal to Tom Smith. That's an example use case. So that's all you have to do. It's really easy. It's just including that custom function, plugging that if then else statement in and creating a just basic collection here to with one document that lists all the strings that are taken. So let me jump into Firebase to actually show you what happens on the back end here. Okay, so you can see I've gone ahead and navigated over to Firebase. I'm within my Firestore database. I'm in the admin collection, the one I just showed you in Flutterflow. You can see there's one document created. And within that, we have the taken usernames and here are the taken usernames. So, you know, lucky Tom Smith was the first one and he got Tom Smith. But if there were additional Tom Smiths that created accounts, you can see it auto generated numbers at the end and that's their username. So your list will continue to pile up here. Again, this isn't a scalable solution if you have tens of thousands of, of users. I wouldn't recommend this, but definitely a great way to get started, test an MVP or just, you know, even a thousand users, you could definitely do this. It won't take too much time. The list sorting is going to be relatively quick there. So hopefully this helped. Super excited to be, you know, pushing this out as a tutorial. Feel free to comment with any questions. Otherwise, check out some of the other tutorial videos, the UI kits we're releasing and more. Thanks.